Our gallant steeds, with impatient hoof, are waiting its rider true. They love the banner that leads them on, the banner of gold and blue. Each year in June we await that first glimpse of the banner blue as it crests the nip nows for the first time that year. However, the cornet is not only in carrying the flag for the first time on that morning chase. His trusty mount is too. Every week his horse has been turned out as immaculate as a rider, ready to tackle the rides throughout the duration of the coming riding. For them like myself, who are unaware of the process of getting the horses ready, I went and spoke to Sally Nevin, who has been the Cornet's groom for the last 38 years. This is George's bridle. It's a D-ring snaffle, nose band, and he has a breastplate which keeps his saddle on, which also doubles up as a running martingale. His brow band's been dressed by Roger Hart. The Cornet's lass make the ribbons. Len Elliott did it for 50 years and then he showed Roger how to do it. Uh, it's a bit of a, spoils Roger's coming riding first. <laughs> Has to stay sober to do the ribbons. Um, but we're getting four ready, we'll have to put saddles on first and then bridles on last. And I've always got to remember to have the flag holder. One for the cornet and one for the Acton father. We've got two, but we've already had a practice during the week that they can, the flag's quite tight in there, obviously, so, and they've got to have a wee bit play on the stirrup. Uh, just, we wear white numbness for the ceremonials, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I've done 34 cornets, but I missed two year. I didn't do Elliot Turnbull and I didn't do David Nuttall. And then I started again with Stuart Farish and I've done it ever since. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's hard work, but I do enjoy it. Help as well. To begin with, it was family, daughter and her friends. and. Obviously, I've had a Cornet's lass out my helpers and I've had an acting mother out my helpers. So they knew what went on behind the scenes. Um, and then just gradually got different people over the years. Did you need reliability and not frightened of the horses or anything. And it's good pocket money for them. Sally, was it a big change moving from the old stables to the new stables? It was, because we moved on a Friday night before Moss Paul, which was a bit, <laughs> a bit hectic. Um, but what a difference it made moving to the new stables, the distance you had to walk and the horses could see more and there's always something going on and they can see the clock, they know what time it is and people walking dogs on the railway line. So obviously the Thursday morning's a big morning for the cornet because it's the first time he gets the flag. Do you think the horses notice a change as well? I'm sure they know that's something different. I think they're just the buzz off yourself, you know, the adrenaline's up. And, but really they're quite tired by then. You know, they've done the nine ride outs and they've done the early morning chases, so they're, they're quite chilled by then. Used to the crowds and the traffic. And, what about favourite ride-out, Sally? Have you got a favourite ride-out? I do like pre stuff. I just think because everybody's together. And the Saturday ride-outs is very busy, but the Tuesdays is a bit more relaxed. Oh, I've got favourite horses. Um, Stuart Irvin's horse, Jacko. Jacko done every ride-out. He only let her down, he wouldn't carry the flag. Well, he did carry the flag, but you wouldn't have seen him. He was going that fast. So we had to get a change of horse for that. And obviously, if we've had lame horses, we've had to beg, steal and borrow. And, but people are really very kind. How, how difficult it is, is it finding a horse that will carry the flag? Is it, it's well, it's not so much if they'll carry the flag, it's if you can handle them with one hand and your flag. And, and they've got to be forward going. You don't want to be sitting trying to kick them, you know, and they've not to be frightened of anything. 
Got to be pretty brave. So do you, do you do anything round about the stables to try and get them ready for Oh, them? yeah. Some, we've had flags tied up at the door, like towels, and we've had them at the trough, and they get them over the head and rattle them with the wind and just training like that. And the boys come up, and sometimes I walk alongside with a towel, and it's just the initial flag going up, I think, so the dodgy bit. So obviously the Saturday of the coming riding is also the end of it for you. Do you have a, a way of celebrating that? We, we used to have our own hut. That was outside Robbie's, but that was a few years ago. And the girls used to pick that they wanted to be somebody, you know, and we, we did have a good time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had two favourite years. It was 2002 when we went to the Queen at Melrose for a Jubilee, and then of course 2014, George, Ross, we were very busy. There was a bit of everything for the town that year, with a reenactment. And So for somebody taking over the role as a groom, Sally, what would you say to them? I would say to them, you've got to be dedicated, you've got to know what you're doing, you've got to be a good timekeeper, but I'd be willing to help them out, you know, give them a guide where to be, what time. You get a lot of satisfaction out of it. And proud when they go out the tower now on the coming right on Friday morning, brings a <laughs> lump in your throat thinking about it. Well, we had a horse from a lady in Jedburgh, and it was a nice bay horse. Can I see the corner or no? Oh, well, they'll know who it is anyway. Moose Nickel, Ian Nickel. And unfortunately, the people that owned the horse didn't know the horse was it. Oh, he'd come and ride in. So I had to change the horse. And they used to laugh at me, the boys did, because they used to say, you'll have to stop washing these horses. Well, I had a brown horse, and the next day I had a white horse. So that went down very well, yes. I'd washed it too much. <laughs> and really before mobile phones, when Colin Murray was calling it, Bruce White was coming over Carter Bar with a horse for us on the Wednesday night, the overseas night. Colin was at the overseas night. His horse had went lame. Bruce had went down to Northumberland to get us a horse and he was coming over Carter Bar at midnight on the Wednesday night. What a shock that horse got at half three in the morning when it got fed. I've got a lot of memories, but um, just the appreciation of the Cornet and Acton Fathers, you know. I mean, when they get off the horse at the hand and back, I think that's when it really hits home to them. That's it, you know. Some of them quite emotional and Everybody's been kind, and but hopefully we'll get the common riding back bigger and better. But as I say, I mean, 34 cornets, a year off for foot and mouth, two years I didn't do it, you know, I'm that much older. <laughs> That was a great insight into how much time and effort guns into it, Sally. Thanks very much.